First and foremost, thanks for having us. Appreciate it very much. Um, our special is called Hope and Healing. Um, so it's just kind of a, a reflection on the last year. Um, it's kind of hard to believe it's coming up a one year mark of that tragedy that took place at the Jefferson Avenue Top Store. Yes, yeah. When I look back at uh, this year and I think about all that's transpired, um, you know, <laughs> I can't ever think about that day without first looking at it and becoming emotional for a number of reasons. First and foremost, just remembering, you know, the 10 lives that were lost and the rest of the victims, uh, the family members of, uh, of the victims and all that they went through, all that that we saw and we experienced, uh, our own store team, what they went through and, and how they reacted and how, you know, they're dealing with it and how they're going through their healing journey and, 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 and to witness that, um, talk to the family members, talk to, you know, some of the victims that, uh, that were our associates. Um, it, it, it gives you a sense of perspective for sure. Um, and it certainly makes me emotional every time I think about it. I would also say, Scott, that it makes me really proud to know how the TOPS team uh, at that store has dealt with what happened that day and uh, the year since, you know, how they've responded, how they've uh, jumped back into the community and serving the customers. Uh, when you talk about this, you can't help but get emotional. This has really hit you to your core. It really has, yeah. Um, even even a year later, uh, it's difficult for me to continue to talk about it. But I know that I have to because we're, you know, we're all together on this uh, healing journey. The whole community, uh, Western New York, is, is is on the journey together. And you know, we know at Tops, and I certainly know for myself that part of our obligation is to help that healing process, uh, to help the community move on. Um, so I think it's an it's important that we do talk about it. It's important that I talk about it. And it's important that we respond uh, to the community, to the victims, to the, to the families of the victims, uh, and to help the community uh, heal. Take me back a year. Um, what were you doing? Uh, when did you hear? How did you react when you heard about the shooting? I was, uh, on May 14th, 2000. 22, I was uh, in Alfred, uh, New York. I was at my son's college graduation, and he was just about to walk across the stage when I received the first phone call uh, that there was an incident at uh, the Jefferson Avenue store. At that time, we didn't know exactly how bad it was. There was, you know, quite a bit of, uh, you know, confusion at the time. And after I received the first phone call from one of our people, uh, I then actually received a phone call from, from one of my brothers. I have two brothers who are in law enforcement uh, in municipalities, not in, not in Buffalo, but in, in uh, neighborhood uh, municipalities, surrounding municipalities. And he, my brother had told me from what he understood how serious it was. So um, I was lucky enough to see my son walk across the stage and then I jumped in uh, my vehicle and I headed back to Buffalo. Well, it's kind of hard in uh, CEO school, they don't teach you uh, crisis management for a shooting like this and a tragedy like this. Um, where did you dig deep to find the strength that you needed to? And I guess my, my question is, they don't teach this in business school. You're the CEO of a, a big billion dollar company. Um, this isn't something that anyone would have expected to ever happen. You sell groceries. Yes, we do we sell groceries. I, uh, Scott, we were lucky that from the perspective of going, coming out of and going through the pandemic, uh, it, it helped our crisis management process. Mm. And so we have a great team at TOPS, um, hardworking, long time, um, just about everybody in the organization is a Buffalonian or a Western New Yorker. I mean, this is a this is a community organization, and you know we've learned we learned a lot through the pandemic, and it helped us come together as a group uh, and pull the rest of our company, pull our store team, um, help pull the community at the time, you know, through those first 
you know, immediate uh, week or two after, after the tragedy. Um, we knew right away that we had to center on our associates, understand exactly what was happening with all of our associates, give them the care, the love, and the support that they needed, and then shift the focus to supporting the community. How do we reach out to the community? And as the only supermarket in Jefferson Avenue neighborhood was closed down, how do we help them? So we immediately focused on the basics. You know, how do we get food? How do we support the community with food? Um, how do we support the community with um, help and assistance through uh, uh, mental health counseling and, and, and management, uh, crisis management uh, to help them? So that's exactly what we did for the first uh, two or three weeks. Um, and I think having that purpose, having that purpose, that focus in our organization absolutely helped us um, you know, center on exactly what our purpose was uh, as a result of this tragedy. What did you learn uh, about your company, your employees, and the city as a result of this tragedy? The outpouring of love and support in the immediate couple weeks was just remarkable. The, the, the different organizations, um, individuals, people, how, how they were so loving to us. They wanted to support TOPS. They wanted to help us support the community. Uh, I will never forget that for the rest of my days, how much care and love the people of Western New York gave our company. You guys were there to support the Jefferson Avenue community as well. That was on top of your mind to make sure that they didn't have a food desert there, correct? That was. That's very critical. Um, immediately we we helped with food distributions, emergency food distributions. So for the two months that the store was closed, we, we had distribution uh, points that we were providing uh, basic needs and, and fresh food. And we also heard pretty quick that, you know, there, was, there were many people asking when will we reopen or what our plans are. People were very, very curious. And so we had to get to the decision, try to make a decision as to what we were going to do. Um, would we reopen the store? Would we consider looking other places? And of course we, we did. We considered should we be looking at another site? Should we relocate? And after we really took a wholesome look at it and realized uh, that would be a multi-year process, um, just building a store, finding a site, making sure it's ready, uh, and then physically building the store uh, could take 18 months to two years. And we know we could remodel a store in a pretty short period of time and we put all of our energies into that, knowing that the community needed a grocery store, needed access to fresh food and groceries. Um, we certainly know that um, it's emotional, that's an emotional topic or was at the time certainly with, with some people in the neighborhood. Um, and we, we absolutely understand that and we wanted to help to try to bridge, you know, that difference or that understanding and help people ease into the store if possible. Um, I would say that the store is doing very well. The community has embraced us, and, and the store is doing well. The store team is doing great. Tell me about the memorial. That's, uh, you guys were also very sensitive about putting in a memorial to the victims at the store. Yeah, so when we opened the store on the 17th of July, we, we opened it with a memorial water wall with a beautiful poem uh, from Jillian Hainsworth, a uh, local uh, Buffalo Poet Laureate. And that was uh, actually an idea from a community meeting that we were at. Before we opened the store, we, we met with various groups just to try to understand what, what they were looking for in the store. Was it, were there different amenities they were looking for? How did they want to memorialize uh, what had happened there? What were their thoughts? Were there any concerns about safety? We wanted to understand those things. So during a meeting, uh, someone had brought up the idea of a water wall. And the rest of the group at the time said, that's a wonderful idea, so that's, that's exactly what we did. Uh, and at this point, we're actually focusing now, the water wall is, is, is up and it's, and it's still there, and we are now focusing on our attention on a, um, a, a remembrance area, an honor area on our property on the front, in the front of our store on the corner of Jefferson and Landon, uh, again, with the help of the community. Uh, they actually, the community groups, uh, including the uh, families of the victims, uh, participated if they, if they wanted to. And they actually designed uh, this, this honor space. 
uh, and by May 14th we'll have a rendering of what that will look like and we'll begin construction this summer and it'll be, it should be ready by the end of the year. Uh, many crisis management people say that this was handled textbook, like a textbook manner, and they praise you and the leadership here for handling it with your sensitivity and the way that it was done. What does that say about the team here at this company? As I think we wouldn't have gotten through this without uh, the team coming together, the whole management team, the entire TOPS team, all 14,000 associates coming together. And, you know, we are Buffalonians. We are Western New Yorkers. This is our company. This is, this is made up of people who were born here, who were raised here, grew up here. Um, we love this community. So I love to say, I like to say anyways, that, that we led with our heart. And, and we continue to do that. This event has given us some perspective now. I think we, we're more in touch with our individual neighborhoods than ever before. Interesting. We just had a, a grand reopening yesterday in a, in a town, Northville, New York, up uh, in, the, in, the, in the Adirondacks. And I said there, as I say at all of our grand reopenings, I give, I give the community a challenge. It was wonderful to see the different community organizations there. And I tell them we want to be a good neighbor. We want to be a good corporate citizen. Please help us do that. Um, please challenge us. We want to partner with you. And that's, and that's something we really learned over the past year is we needed to re-engage with, with our partners in the community and in, in the neighborhoods. And that was some of the good that came out of this, out of this past year. So there is hope and there is healing. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Thank you, John.